Hello, Gary Bonnell here. I thought I would uh, do a short uh, video on <clears throat> these cycles, these 13,000 year cycles I've been uh, talking about. This information, by the way, when we cross that midpoint um, in the transition between the duality cycle and the unity cycle, when we Across that midpoint, much more of the history of humanity was opened up in the Akasha. Now, the transition waves between cycles borrow 500 years from the previous cycle and 500 from the next. And that midpoint was between the 10 years between 2001 and 2011. Now, the transition started back around 500 years ago. So we are in this wonderful period now where we have the full influence of the unity energy. Even though we're not deeply into it yet, that would be in another 500 years, but the unity cycle is really upon us and it is changing humanity very rapidly the mutations, uh, knots that were put on our DNA a long time ago, those are being, some of them are being activated. Uh, the one that's really causing a lot of uh, change in consciousness is the um, mutation knot that is taking humans into a non-gendered state. Now, some of my friends are going, non-gender, you mean we won't have male and female? What about what about sexual pleasure and, you know, a lot of base uh, conversations? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, if you can imagine being able to do a high five to somebody in the future and having more of a pleasure experience from that than you would ever have had in the short pleasure experience of sexual union. So, so when, when we think of this, we, we can't think of it in terms from the duality cycle. It's the unity cycle and, and this connectivity thing that's happening is going to be pretty amazing. Now this transmuta uh, transmutation not to non-gender is causing first the consciousness uh, to begin to shift. That's why we're getting a lot of people not identifying with their assigned uh, gender at birth. So a lot of things are, are really beginning to take place. But what I wanted to do was, um, first what I'm going to do is basically put up some angelic uh, data um, This is um, angelic lettering is what was used in the um, what we think of as the uh, Atlantean uh, period, and a lot of people uh, who have witnessed this kind of languaging, um, they've uh, you know basically talked about it being. Um, a certain way and and there's a lot of uh, conversation about it and uh, to be honest um, when you're in the Akashic record when you're in the Akasha and you're looking at a very specific period if you don't understand right away what this is there's one quick solution and that is to ask for the records to interpret it to you in a way that you can currently understand. And what happens is then all of these associated symbols become connected to what we would think of as words. But there, it's really not a language, it's a telepathic communication. But there are symbols for that. So. I just wanted to make sure that we were, we're on the same page with that and understand why I'm doing this. Okay, so um, the, the 13,000 year cycles, so let's call this the midpoint. Here's that 2001-2011 period. That was, that's the midpoint. Now, 
Again, what happened, as soon as we crossed this midpoint, a huge amount of information was suddenly available in the Akasa, Akasha, about uh, humanity's journey on Earth and the development of humanity. And if we go back 13,000 years, in this period, uh, we see um, this duality cycle. And, and that duality cycle might look like a, a kind of a, a, a dive into uh, conflict, basically, where the spirit will do anything to survive, in, including um, the acts of war, the, all these things that we've experienced. This cycle back here was the Atlatia cycle, and that period of time, that's, so back here is where uh, the Great Pyramids were built. Um, uh, all of the pyramid cultures were back there, and the pyramid cultures are around the world. Um, not just in Egypt, but uh, in uh, Slovakia, in uh, China has seven major pyramids that are much bigger than Giza. Um, they were covered over to protect them from thieves and vandals. Um, there are pyramids underwater near Japan. There are uh, temples and pyramids throughout the Amazon jungle uh, in the waters of the Gulf. Um, especially uh, in the area around Cuba at about 250, 300 feet. Um, it's, it's really quite amazing, the, the pyramid culture that was on Earth. Uh, Gobekli Tempe is, is a very interesting um, uh, ruin. It was covered over in the, in the Younger Dryas period by the Great Wave of Water. Uh, we also have uh, Puma Punko in Bolivia that uh, was closer to the ocean level at one point, but because of the sudden rise of land, the sudden shifting, same thing happened to the Atlatia culture. If you look, if you Google the eye of the desert, uh, that was the center area of the Atlatia culture. And when the land swelled up there, it took that, that capital area of Atlatia away from the waters, and it's now in the desert. Um, the valley we think of as the Mediterranean was once this pristine valley. They've, they've identified over 200 sites, archaeological sites from satellites in the Mediterranean. I mean, it's really quite amazing, uh, the, the history of humanity. So, so when, we, when we go from the Atlatia cycle into this duality cycle, and this cycle, duality cycle, some people refer to and translate out of the Akasa as Urantia. So now we're going into this period where here, I'll use a purple. This now period is going to bring about um, complete co connectivity for humans. And in this cycle, beginning right about here, uh, let's call that 2037, uh, there's going to be a profound shift for humans. And by the peak of it, um, all eternal souls are going to go to other systems and earthborn souls are going to take over the threefold mind of each human. So we've got a lot of events that are going to happen. In 2057, um, there's going to be a reset of life on Earth. And yeah, I know that's, uh, whenever I bring this up, I, I feel the tension within myself. I have, I have descendants who will be alive at that point. Um, what this is, is that if you look at the earth and, and you look at all the different cycles of, you know, the rise and falls of, of life, if you look at all of that, you know, 
uh, people say, well, you know, they, the pyramids were built and then those people died off and the culture died off. No, it wasn't that. It was a complete and sudden reset. The Great Pyramid of, of Giza um, has within it, and the reason why it's an important structure, it has within it all of the records of all of these timelines prior to this uh, new cycle. And it goes, those, cycle, those records go way back, and they're, interestingly, on crystal disks. Um, the crystal disks, we have the technology to read. We can store data in crystal, and we can pull data out of crystal. So <clears throat> it's going to be real interesting when the war in the Middle East uh, takes off the top of the pyramid and that chamber that this is all held in is then exposed. So, I know, war in the Middle East. Well, um, most of the nations in Europe are now armoring and they're now <clears throat> deciding that they need to prepare for war uh, because of what is, Putin is doing. And because of the threat of the politics deteriorating here in the United States. So, um, go back to the reset. Uh, the people that built all that, those structures are no longer here because of a reset. Uh, the Bible calls it the Great Flood. Um, every culture on earth has a flood myth or a flood story. So when we look at humanity, humanity has gone through this over and over and over again. At one point, the reason why we all share uh, the same basic, same DNA, is at one point, the population of humanity was down to 30,000 individuals. Now, um, it's going to be down to about 500 million. That means 8 billion humans will no longer be on the planet after this big reset. And if you want to know what the reset is, the sun releases plasma, you know, constantly. That's part of its, its mechanism. And when the Earth is in direct line for one of those great releases, the last time it hit Earth, the Grand Canyon was created. There was a beautiful inland water uh, way that when that hit, that water rushed down that scar and created what uh, archaeologists say uh, was water creating the Grand Canyon. Well, it was the sun. And at the same time, Mars had a glancing blow. And when it was more of a glancing blow than we had, and when you look on Mars, there's a, a near identical scar, but their scar would go from LA to New York. And then there was a planet that was orbiting uh, Jupiter, and that planet was called Maldek, and that planet had a direct hit and was totally destroyed, and that's the asteroid field between Mars and Jupiter. So, yeah, we're at that stage. We're basically what Christians might call end times. Um, you know... <laughs> Uh, all of this is kind of, you know, it's, it's worrisome, it's devastating, yes. And it's what happens, it's the cycles of life on earth. Gaia will reset life on earth as Gaia has done uh, at every other point. Uh, there will be earthborn souls that take the place of uh, eternal souls. So when earth renews, the humans on earth are going to be body, spirit, and soul of the earth. Um, imagine on the planet, uh, every human having the same type of consciousness as Jesus Christ or Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene and Mary of Sepphoris. So when you think of that, everybody being a Buddha, everybody, you know, uh, you know having the profound intelligence and connectivity, so, yes, it's a reset. Sorry about that. Now, 
before 2037, that major sh the major shift in collective consciousness, um, there's going to be, in 2027, a short period from now, a, a revelation. And that revelation is going to be that those uh, off-world beings that have helped guide the development of modern humans, the expansion of our intellect, the ability to have all this technology, um, that um, those beings are going to reveal themselves and say, here we are, we've been here all this time. Yes, we have been leaders in, in past timelines. Yes, we, we have been cultural leaders in past timelines. Uh, we're here. Um, we want you to know that we're here to help in this transition that's going to take place. Um, you know, that whole idea of Noah having a boat and putting two of everything on it. Uh, that's not actually what happened. What happened was there was a group of off-world beings that took life off Earth, uh, the majority of life off Earth, uh, to an adjacent dimension where life went into a suspended state. And it's, it's really kind of a technology they use, uh, these off-world beings use, to, to go from system to system. So it's this transmigration technology. <clears throat> and uh, when Earth was suitable again, human life was, the vibration and frequency of human life was again placed back on Earth's surface and taken out of suspension. So for those forms of life, there would have been no time experience. It would have, they would have been suspended. So I know that sounds wild. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's any more wild than, than a little boat holding two of everything on the earth. So anyway, um, any questions about this, please uh, put them in the comments, um, you know, Facebook or or my website, uh, theknowingway.online, or in, in uh, YouTube. So um, this is a big subject, and I, I love talking about it, and I've given quite a lot of information on it over the years. And uh, I appreciate your listening, and uh, hope to connect up with you guys again soon. Thanks. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.